the What to Read Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lauren and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next favorite read, then this show is for Hi, Amy. Welcome to What's Your Next Podcast. Hey, Laura. So happy to have you back. So tell us where you've been up to. Thank you for having me back. I'm just getting ready for fall, deep into the fall reading mood. Yeah. I want either like cozy fall romances or creepy thrillers. And I'm excited to talk to you about thrillers today. I know. We first need to talk about our book club because I realized we haven't mentioned this, but we have a book club to our listeners. Oh my gosh, we've, we've never mentioned it. <laughs> no. I think it's been a while since I've been on though, so that makes sense yeah. that we haven't yeah. chatted about it. Yes. To our listeners, we started a book club a few months ago with our friend Sarah, and it's called Do You Even Read Romance? And we pick a couple books, and sometimes we read the books, sometimes we don't read the books, but we do have monthly or every other month conversations. And we have a great group that comes to our meetings and we just chit chat about recommendations and romance and what we've been up to. It's very, it's probably the most low key book club you've ever heard of, because if you didn't read the book, we don't care because as the host, even sometimes we don't read the book because we're mood readers. And sometimes we pick a book ahead of time and we're like, that sounds great. That's what happened to our last month. Um, We picked some summer reads. And by the time I, it was time for me to read them, I was like, I don't want to read summer books. I want to read fall books. So it's okay. No one cares. It's very low key. It's a lot of fun. We do two picks a month. Yeah. And we usually try to vet them, at least one of them first. So because we've had some times in the past where we did it. And then we were like, oops, these weren't the best choices. But we try to pick um, indie authors a lot of times. Some traditionally published, but not the big books. We're not picking the bestsellers for the month and this is yeah. that kind of book club it's more hidden gems and we pick by trope too which is always fun and we sometimes open up the voting to our members and help us pick a trope like I said it's very low-key we can be swayed to do anything we're like oh yeah that sounds fun you want to read so this the next month we're doing what neighbor is that what we're, we're doing? doing neighbor so I think it's TL's one I don't know what the name of the title the the title is my temptation I believe okay yep. and, and then the other one is what is that one? It's Ron Parrish. Ron Parrish category romance. Something yeah, neighbor. It's, a, it's some cute fall romance that I haven't read yet that Sarah likes. So I'm taking her word for it. And we're going to give that yeah. a shot. It looks like it looks very fall from the picture. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but like sometimes in my reading for fall stuff, especially with romance, I'll grab a book because it has a very cute fall cover and like the leaves and everything. And then there's one scene and it's that was it. Yeah, so I'm hoping it delivers, but I think they're doing something with some kind of festival or party or some yeah. kind of fall event. I don't remember, but I I think Sarah confirmed it was fall approved. So okay, so we're excited for that one. <laughs> yeah, high hopes for that one for sure. Yeah, and and honestly, you can join us. We have a book. We're part of the book club apps. We just post our Zoom. Anyone can join. We meet at typically meet at eight o'clock Eastern, five o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Or maybe a little later, but not too late because I'm in Eastern, but Amy and Sarah are in the West Coast. And- yes, definitely. And they're very informal chats and we just talk about the books and what we liked and didn't like. And it's, we also are always like, what have you read lately? What have you liked? What have you didn't like? Because we're always looking for more books to read, of course. Yeah. <laughs> more recommendations. So yeah, it's fun. But yes, anyone can join and you don't have to read every month with us. You can join, you can read, you can join the meeting and not even have read the book like we do. <laughs> like it's very low key, but we would love to have you if you want to join. And our Instagram handle is to even ro- read romance as yep. well. So you can find the link and all that there. Awesome. All right. So today we're talking about creepy thrillers. You got a mix for this. For the listeners who are listening, I actually am... Um, a newish thriller reader. So I go to Amy for my recommendations of, okay, I need something that's just like creepy murder, creepy husband, or something twisty. Yeah. And so Amy will give me plot driven, fast paced thrillers that I get to do. So I binge on, I, my recent binge was Freedom McFadden. I've done Kristen Moxlin or K Mod, I think Mod. it is. I don't know. Yeah, actually, K-Mod. yeah that's what I always think. K-Mod. Her name. Always <laughs> so all those new thrillers, but sometimes I just pick the regular thrillers. And so I usually go to Amy's reads account and I check out what she has read. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'll try that one based on her rating. So 
I'm very excited to hear your recommendations because you curated a list for us. I did. I tried to pick five different books with for a little something for everyone. And I tried to do, you know, some traditionally published, some indie. So some I listened on audio. So I'll give you a little breakdown when we get to them. But yes, I tried. And I tried to pick books that some of them are popular, but some of them I hope that are not like, oh my God, I've heard this book 500 times already. Yeah. I am something different. Yeah. Yeah. I was excited because I feel like we're pretty, we're pretty diversely. Like you read a lot and we mm-hmm. like different genres, like not just the popular bestsellers. Like I can find hidden yeah. gems of people that I'm like, oh, I did not know like this one existed or this person does like really does this really well. And so that's what I like about your reading taste is I can appreciate that I, I can find someone who I trust to read something that's not normally being seen. Yeah. yeah thank you I appreciate that like I said I'm okay I read a lot of popular authors like I've read yeah. like all of Riley Sager and like a couple there's at least one of the books on this list that's been pretty popular I think on bookstagram right now and it's a traditionally published one so I have no problem with that but I like to try to find other things too I don't I'm not one that just wants to only read a thriller that's published by the big five or whatever like yeah. I want the hidden gems as well too and I have KU too I want to be finding those those thriller gems because it's easy to find the romance I think it's harder for me at least on KU to find the good thriller sometimes you have to really dig deep I don't find a lot of recommendations so I'm like if they're not out there then I'm going to try to find them so I can give people recommendations because it's hard to find thriller KU Rex I think yeah I yeah, I, I when I was in Frida and my Frida journey that yeah. probably came to a stop with a coworker. I I, I haven't met, I made it past twenty percent. I downloaded a bunch of like thrillers that I wanted to try, and then I just was like, then my feed was like my KU feed was all thrillers, but I was like, but yeah. if they're not gonna be good. Like it's such a, thrillers are hard to write. Like they're not this like it's not this like going luster. Like you have to plot it out. You have to figure out the twist. Yeah. And you have to give us clues, but not too early and not to figure it out because then it's like the sweet moment you're losing and you have to go blind. That's the other part. Like you totally. And there's nothing worse than reading a thriller that's completely predictable all the way through. Like in a romance, we don't care. We know what we're yeah. getting with those. If it's predictable, whatever. But in a thriller, you don't pick one up. So you're like, oh, I want to know exactly what's going to happen. Like yeah. you want that shock value. You want to at least be a little bit surprised. And I don't mind some predictability. I've read way too many thrillers to expect every author to completely blindside me. It's great when it does happen, of course. But I still want to be like engaged and wondering what's going to happen and not knowing, oh, this is for sure where this author is going. Because there's been a couple of thrillers where within 10 pages, they're like, well, I already know what's going to happen here. And then you read it and you're like, yep, that was great. <laughs> That's never fun. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's get to the recommendations. So. <laughs> All right. All right. The first one I'm bringing is The September House by Carissa Orlando. And this is a debut. It's a thriller, but I, what I really liked about this is it was like a blend of a bunch of different things. Mm-hmm. So quick synopsis, it's about Margaret and Hal, and they buy their dream Victorian home at a really good price. But there's a reason for that. Every September, the house is completely haunted. Creepy shit happens. Blood on the walls. Ghosts. I don't even want to say anymore, but it's only in September. So Margaret, I'll deal. I will deal with this. It's my dream home. She doesn't care. After I think it's four years, how is I'm not dealing with it anymore. He's gone. He leaves. So basically it's what happens after her husband leaves. And I don't really want to say more about the plot, but if you like the sounds of that, it blends horror, a family drama. Hello, maybe I can talk. Dark humor and a psychological thriller. So it was super unique. There was times where I was cracking up. There was some of the, like even the little ghost things were funny and then there's times where it's not funny like it's not overly funny by any means but it was just a good balance it was probably one of the more unique books I've read lately but that would be perfect for getting you into a spooky season mood for sure I'm adding it was this a lot of fun I'm adding this one for October just to have some ghost yeah, stories it is. and it was really good I, I wasn't quite sure how it was all going to end I liked the way everything and it was a five star for me and I love the audio I can't remember who the narrator was but she it's narrated by Margaret and she captured that middle age mom kind of voice perfectly as they're talking about who this character is I'm like oh my god it sounds she was just one of those incredible so that one was really fun and I've been to audiobook in 24 hours because I was just having such a blast with it 
adding that as an audiobook. You have to let me yes. know. You have to let me know if you have it in your account. <laughs> yes, for sure. I, I think I got that one from um, PRH Audio. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Right. I'll, I'll cut that out for those <laughs> because I'm like, yes. Yeah, they're like, oh, can I get that? Okay. My next pick was The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. Have you ever read her, Laura? No, I have not read her at all. I received a couple of her books from Berkeley just because of the relationship that I have with Berkeley, but I have not read her books. She is great. She's been consistently a solid author for me. And I picked this one just because I think it fits good for spooky season, but I really have liked all of her books. And this one is about Shay. She's a true crime blogger, which mm-hmm. I like that aspect yeah. of it. I, I'm always a sucker for podcasting or blogging or yes. anything, and especially with a true crime spin. Yes, totally into that. And she ends up interviewing a woman named Beth, who was acquitted of two full case murders back in 1977. And the present timeline is 2017. So it flips back and forth, which I like that if it's well done, like the past and the present, and it keeps you on your toes, definitely. And this has a little bit of a hint of the supernatural too. And that's one thing I really like about Simone's book is that she does supernatural, I call it supernatural light, because it's like grounded in reality, like to where you think, oh, this could really happen. Some of that way out there supernatural stuff, I'm like, I can't get behind because I'm just like, no way is that going to happen. But she does a really good job at this, of keeping it where it's spooky enough to freak you out. But it freaks me out even more because I'm like, oh my God, that could really happen. That kind of thing. And she's really good at creating a good atmosphere. And there's a spooky house and all that so that's another reason why I picked this book like I said because the atmosphere the spookiness it's just like perfect for all vibes yeah. adding that one too uh, you yeah, do but so many like I, <laughs> yeah but like I said any of her books have been really good for me yeah. she went out um in 2024 that I'm really excited about too but she's one that's like pretty much auto read for me after I've read like two or three books and they know they're good I'm like okay yep she's good she's really good you should definitely try her if you're looking for a fall thriller. Yeah. Okay, what do I have next? Oh, this was a good one. It's Romantic Suspense. It's okay. Where the Blame Lies by Mia Sheridan. Have you read any of her books? No, I've heard about Archer's Voice for as long as I've been a reader, as a romance reader. And I, for some reason, I have avoided it. Maybe because it was, maybe it was, it was picked by Trisha Bollish, so it was expensive. And, but I, she's all the rave and I know she writes like really yeah. good I think Ali brought her one of her thrillers off so I am curious about her from that standpoint not from the romance but maybe from the thriller yes. the suspense standpoint I actually got this recommendation from Ali for this one because I've seen her obviously Mia's books floating around and they seem like very angsty romance yeah which I wasn't really in the mood for but then when she told me about this one so this is actually the first in a a duet Mm -hmm. you don't have to read both of them if you don't want to I did because I like the first one so much Mm -hmm. and it's labeled as a romantic suspense I would say it had it was so suspenseful it was definitely a thriller to me yes there was romance and everything like that but it wasn't like light suspense like sometimes romantic suspense can be it was super intense and super graphic and it was really good but basically it's about a girl named Josie she was kidnapped when she was 19 and she was held prisoner for 10 months in like brutal conditions. And then she escapes after those 10 months. And I won't talk about that too much because that was really interesting, but it's eight years later. And there's a body of a woman that was found in very similar conditions to when she was held captive. And, but her captor committed suicide. So the cops are like, what is even happening here? He's dead. Why is there a woman that's so much like her? And so enter Zach, who is the detective, and that's where the romantic suspense side and all that comes in. But it was really dark, really gritty, really disturbing. So this is definitely one to not read if you're just only used to reading like popcorn thrillers and not too much horror and guts. It's there's kidnapping, there's sexual abuse, triggers for everything. But if that kind of stuff doesn't bother you, this was really freaking good. I need to be in the right mood for this one. It sounds off my alley, but at the same time, I need to be in the right mood. (laughs) And if you're going to read both books, don't read the synopsis for the second one because it'll ruin stuff. So just go in blind. Don't read any more about any of them. And just, I did audio on these too. Yeah. Both of them were really good. Excellent audio. And another one that I was like 24 hours done. And then I messaged Dali and was like, do I need to read the next book? 
because it's not like you want to read it because it's a cliffhanger. The story's tied up, so you can easily read it on its own. But she was like, oh my God, yes, and don't read who it's about. And then as soon as it started, I was like, no way. Like, it was really good. <laughs> she did a really good job with that. But it really made me think, okay, I need to read more from this author. I know she, yeah. she writes a little bit across the romance genre, but I'm excited to read some more of her stuff. I don't know if it'll be Archie's voice, but I'm definitely going to try some more of her things. That's her book, true. for sure. Yeah. Okay, let's see what I have next. Oh, this one is a, I think it's an under the radar kind of hidden gem. It's called We're All Lying by Marie Still. Okay. Um, I, came, I think it came out like in March, so it's been out a little while. I don't think that it's on KU, but I think it was um, an indie publisher. I can't remember. Yeah. This is a good popcorn domestic thriller. It's about Cass. She's married, mother of two, and she gets this email from this woman named Emma and finds out that her husband has an mistress. And Emma starts taunting her, stalking her, and then Emma disappears. And guess who's the number one suspect? Cass. So that's pretty much all you need to know about that one. Yeah. And I loved this because it's, again, I remember talking to Allie and we're like, oh my God, I love that this book is called We're All Lying because it's like, it's up front with who's telling the truth, right? Yeah. Because you hear all these different people and the whole time it's multiple point of view. You're trying to figure out like, what happened is Emma even dead did she just go into hiding like is Cass lying obviously we know hus the husband I think his name was um Ethan's lying because he has a mistress so you can't trust him but it was just one of those really fun popcorn juicy yeah unbelievable but just fun twisty <laughs> sit on the couch in one day and read it kind of fun read yeah Oh, you have me a popcorn thriller, and this one is just has all the domestic, the mistress, the who's lying, who's doing this. It's just, it's it has all the goodness, all the drama that I'm looking for. Oh, drama. Yes, and I know people get sick of domestic or neighborhood thrillers with a cheating husband and a mistress, but I don't get sick of it. If the author can put their own little unique twist on it, I am yeah. so in, and I felt like she did a pretty dang good job of putting her own spin on it here but yeah I'm not I don't think I'll ever be sick of that it's like real housewives like I'm never yeah. sick of their drama no Same kind of thing it feeds that drama for me I'm so into it no it's yeah, just so like, I, I think it feeds into this like, I love gossip and you like gossip yeah so, like I love that there's something to be said about gossip about other people's gossip other people's drama like I just want to consume it this is like my passion my I grew up in a place where gossip was worship and so absolutely <laughs> I am all about, and so I find books like popcorn thrillers, like about cheating this, cheating that. Yeah. I just gobble them because I'm like, I just want to know. <laughs> no, same. I eat that stuff up too because if I don't want drama in my own life, no, absolutely not. But if it's someone else's and I can be nosy and find yeah. out all the details, I am all about that. Even if it's some big characters, yep, give it to me. Yep. It's just like my take on TikTok. I like TikTok, but I feel like sometimes I waste hours and learning other people's drama because TikTok gives you the story. And then you go like back to the other part two, part three of the story. And you're like, I'm learning about <laughs> someone cheated on this one or someone did this or we all dating the same guy. And I'm like, I'm yes. here for it. Like, it's the same idea. Like in book form, I'm like, I just need that. Right. It, like constructed in a way that I'm just like I'm just here for that drama <laughs> yeah totally you can get yeah TikTok you can go down the rabbit hole I have to watch myself sometimes and be like how long have I been on this app because you can really get going and going from account to account and story to story it's a lot yeah so but I'm, I'm I'm bumping this one to number one so that's going to be like the okay one downloading today <laughs> Okay, let me see if this one might get your attention too. Okay. This could be up your alley. This is my last one. It's called The Wife Before by Shonora Williams. And oh. she has, she's a romance author too. Yeah. I've only read her thrillers. I've had really great luck with two and one, not so much. But this is my favorite of the three thrillers of hers that I've written. I would like to try a romance because she's a good writer. But her thrillers yeah. are the, per like we were just saying, perfect weekend centuries. Let me tell you what this one's about. It's uh, Samira. She meets this guy named Roland. He's wealthy. He's a pro golfer. He totally dazzles her. They have a whirlwind romance and a quickie marriage. And then she finds old journals from his late wife, Melanie. She died in a tragic accident. <laughs> so, sounds like we've heard that story before. Yeah. Right? That is not a new plot. I remember when I first read the synopsis, I was like, maybe, maybe I'll try that. But that really sounds like five other million books that we've read I'm telling you it is not exactly what you think 
It is not as clear cut as it makes it seem. It's not, oh, I've read that thriller before. It's fast paced, it's juicy, it, it reads like a soap opera. It was really, really good. I yeah. freaking loved it. And I loved that I went into it thinking like, all right, I'm going to read this. Um, Shelly at Shelly's Book Corner had given me yeah. the recommendation. And I was like, all right, I'm going to read it because Shelly said it was good. And she doesn't usually scare me wrong. And the whole time, not the whole time, but like a good chunk of the time, I was like, all right, I can see what's happening here. Oh, the wife died in a tragic accident. Hmm, wonder what's going on here. And then when you everything does come together, I was like, okay, she was right. This was good. So that those last two are my popcorn, domestic, if you want something quick, brain, brain candy. Like I can just yeah. read this, set out the world. Those were both excellent choices for that. So I, those will probably be up your alley. Out of all the I'm, ones I shared, I'm yeah. thinking those two are for you, Laura. Yeah. I think I may just pick those two. I tried to show Nora Williams. I think it was due from the library, but I may pick this one up just to make mm-hmm. a thing. Because she sounds similar to A. Tora or El Centaur, like that. Like yes. The Freedom of Fadden's so domestic popcorn, easy to consume, easy to binge. No, so A.R. Tour is a great comp for her because yeah. I've not read her romance either, but I've read a lot of her thrillers and she that's a very similar comp. If you yeah. like A.R. Tour's thrillers, then definitely try Shonora Williams because she's pretty good. And I like a short book. I like a quick read. I don't want a four to 500 page book. <laughs> and this woman keeps them like 300 or less. So yeah. that, there's something to be said that she can tie up that story that quickly. And she does the short chapters, the really yeah. short chapters, where some of them are only a page or two and nothing keeps me reading like chapters like that. I'm like, ooh, okay, just one more, just one more, just one more. Yeah. Oh, you have me at that. Yeah. I read A.R. Torres in Romans. She actually came on the show in 2018. Oh, really? Really early oh, wow. on, really early uh-huh. on. Yeah, there's an interview. And I, because I read some of her indie romans and I was like, and, and they're basically mystery. There's always like a mystery related to it. There's always a twist oh. for her romans. So it was like, not just like regular romans, like, oh, blah, blah, blah. They fall into it. No, there's always something overarching the story. Uh, uh-huh. and it was interesting. And so when I started reading her thrillers, I would bench them in like a couple hours. I was like, oh, this is just great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hours, I'm done. <laughs> I finish a book and I'm like entertained. Um, yeah. So... So, I think a lot of her thrillers are on KU too because she's yeah. with Amazon Pub for them. And a lot of times if she's with Amazon Pub, there'll be free audio too. Yep. So that's a good way to sample her workout. I, I can't think of the name of the one of hers that I really like. It's okay. We'll post it was it. out within the last couple of years. It was a thriller with Thomas and Mercer though, which is Amazon Pub or whatever though. So yeah. she's, she's definitely another good one if you end up liking Shonora's book. Yep. She's fun. I love this. All right, Amy, tell us where you can find me online. You can find me on Instagram at Novel Gossip, and my blog is novelgossip.com. Thank you, Amy, for being on the show. Thanks so much for having me. It's always so fun to chat with you. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other book recommendations, please visit whatreadnextblog.com. Thank you so much for listening and happy reading.